Hi, and welcome to Lesson 1.2, Use Segments and Congruence. So again, as we learned in our last lesson, geometry definitely is a bit heavier in definitions than algebra was. So our fundamentals and our basics, especially in Chapter 1, are really going to be based on understanding some basic definitions and then pieces we will expand upon. So the first definition that we want to look at is the definition of a postulate. <clears throat> so in geometry, a postulate is a rule that is accepted without proof. So postulates are geometric rules that we accept without proof. A theorem is a rule that can be proved. So we have a postulate, which we accept without proof, and a theorem, which is a rule that can be proved. And you'll see in the back of your geom geom yeah, geometry books, I can speak English, in the back of your geometry books, you will see that there is a section devoted to postulates and theorems. So as we go throughout different lessons this year, you will want to become familiar with where that section's located and want to use it to reference, especially when it comes time to go through multi-step proofs. But for today, we are starting simple, and we are going to look at postulate number one, the ruler postulate. So obviously, we are familiar with a ruler typically 12 inches long or a foot. The ruler postulate states that the points on a line can be matched one-to-one -one with the real numbers. The real numbers that correspond, or that correspond to a point is the coordinate of the point. So the number that we assign to that point, or that corresponds to that point, is known as the coordinate of that point. And then the distance between points A and B is written simply as the capital letter A next to the capital letter B. So if we have two capital letters written next to each other, that means the distance between points A and B. <clears throat> so how we figure out distance between two points, if we're looking at points A and B, the distance is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So we know difference means subtraction, and the absolute value, a reminder there, are these two symbols here, the vertical lines that go outside of our subtraction, and absolute value simply means how far away from zero. So if we're dealing with the absolute value, the absolute value of 5 is simply 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. So the absolute value guarantees our answer of distance will always be a positive number we cannot have a negative distance in mathematics. So example one simply says, measure the length of segments or of segment ST to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So the first thing you wanna do is line up your measuring tool, a ruler, with the letter S now, you want to line it up with the zero on your centimeter side. Now, it sounds funny to cover that you should line up the end point with zero, but if you look at the majority of rulers, the end of the ruler is not where they start measuring, so you want to be careful and line up where it starts measuring, that little hash mark by zero, with your end point. So then from S to T, that line segment measures. 3.1 centimeters. So the tenth again is one decimal point. So our nearest tenth would be 3.1.
So that's just a simple example of the ruler postulate. By setting 0 at s, and t was at 3.1, that allowed us to measure the segment st. So that is an example of what the ruler postulate means. It allows us basically to measure segments, or to measure the distance between two points. Then our second postulate, the segment addition postulate. So the segment addition postulate says, if we're dealing with three points, so points A, B, and C, if B is between A and C, and we're assuming these are all on the same segment, so they're all collinear, meaning on the same line, so if B is between A and C, then segment AB plus segment BC equals the segment of AC. So for example, if we look down here at this picture, we have points L, T, and S. So our segment addition postulate says that L to T, that distance, plus T to S, so if we take segment LT plus TS, those two added together would give us the whole segment of LS. So to help you visualize, you could look at the LTS here in place of A, B, and C. So T is in the middle, so LT plus TS gives us the whole segment length of LS. And then we also have if AB plus BC equals AC, then we can say B is between A and C. So it is the reverse of this previous statement. So it's just saying we could work that backward. So if we were given measurements and they added up to be the total length, then we know that point uh, that shared, in this case B, is in between the endpoints A and C. So it's just the reverse of that first statement. And you'll also see in geometry, many times our statements of postulates and theorems can be written and will be written as if-then statements. And we'll go more into that later this year, but I just wanted you to notice that that if-then format will become pretty common. <clears throat> now example two. Example two says the cities shown on the map lie approximately in a straight line. So because they're approximately in a straight line, we're going to make the assumption that it is a straight segment. Use the given distances to find the distance from Lubbock, Texas to St. Louis, Missouri. So in this case, what we know is from Lubbock, Texas to Tulsa, it's 380 miles. And then from Tulsa to St. Louis, it's another 360 miles. So I know those didn't print too clear, but it is 380 miles and 360 miles. So we can use the segment addition postulate, take that length of Lubbock to Tulsa, and then the length from Tulsa to St. Louis, and add those together, and our distance from Lubbock to St. Louis would be 740 miles. Now, two other examples, looking at that segment addition postulate. So in this case, use the diagram to find, and they wrote GH next to each other. So again, from earlier, we know two letters next to each other means the distance from G to H. So they, in order to find the distance G to H, what I know is they gave me F to H was 36. F to G was 21. And I'm missing this piece of GH. So in this case, I know G's in the middle. So if I take GH plus FG, that would equal the whole segment of FH. 
So that's what this setup is right here. So if FH, the whole segment's 36, and FG, that part is 21, then what we're missing is this piece of GH. So we can subtract the 21 from the 36, and we know our missing piece of GH is 15. So our distance would be 15 units. Then in part B, we're looking for the distance WX. In this case, W is between V and X, so I know the segment VW plus the segment WX will equal the whole segment of VX. So that's our setup. And then we can replace what we know. So 144 goes in for VX. VW gets replaced by 37. And we're trying to figure out WX. So we can solve for WX by subtracting our 37 from each side. And we know WX is then 104 units. Now our next definition to take a look at is this uh, the idea of congruent segments. So congruent segments are defined as line segments that have the same length. So again, segments can be measured because they have endpoints, unlike lines that go on forever. So congruent segments have the same length. So in other words, if our lengths are equal, meaning AB here is equal to CD here, we would read that as AB is equal to CD. Then we can say, because the lengths are the same, then we can say these segments are congruent. So the definition of congruent segments are segments that have the same length. And this symbol here, which didn't print too well, so I rewrote it here, it's an equal sign with kind of a squiggly line above it. That is the symbol for congruence. So that is our congruent symbol. Now, one other thing to point out in this diagram. This hash mark that's in the middle of the segment, so it's in the middle of both segment AB and CD. What that means is segment AB is congruent to segment CD. So if we had a third segment of like EF and that also had the hash mark on it, that means all three are congruent or the same length. So the little hash mark on a segment means congruent so we know they're the same length. Now example four. Example four asks us to plot a few points on the coordinate plane. And I'll tell you my boring Cartesian coordinate plane story another time. And actually it's not boring to me, but to most people it is. But just understand the term coordinate plane refers to this grid here, or what we consider graph paper with our coordinates given by the x and y axis. y axis going up and down or vertical, x axis going horizontal. So a quick refresher on how to plot points if you forgot. You always start at the origin or 0, 0. So we start where the x and y axis meet. For plotting j, we would go left 3 to negative 1, 2, 3, and then up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that gives us j. For k, it's at a positive 2, positive 4, so again, we start at 0, 0. We go right 2, 1, 2, and up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then l over 1, up 3. Both are positive, so we're going right and up. Again, start at 0, 0. Right 1, up 3. And then for m, it's a positive 1, negative 2. So we go right 1 and down 2. So what that allows me to create, like they said here, is they want us to determine if 
segment JK and LM are congruent. So I just drew my segment connecting JK and my line segment connecting LM. So then what I can do with that is in JK, I know both of them are at the same height. So I can figure out my distance if I know that K is at a positive 2 and J is at a negative 3. I can use my distance from right up here by subtracting the two points and using the absolute value. So K is at a positive 2, J is at a negative 3. 2 minus a negative 3 is the same as 2 plus 3, and the absolute value of 5 is 5. For LM, it goes vertical, but we know they're both over the same amount. So if I figure out how high up L is and how low M is, their Y coordinates, I can then subtract and use the absolute value to get the distance. So L was at a positive 3, M was at a negative 2. So 3 minus a negative 2, that also gives us a distance of 5. So they are the same length, meaning they are congruent. So we can say, yes, segment JK is congruent to segment LM. <clears throat> now, another way you could simply do this is just looking at the drawing. And we could count from J to K. One, two, three, four, five units. And then from L to M. One, two, three, four, five units. So both are the same distance or same length. So yes, they are congruent. And it does not matter for segment congruence if one's vertical and one is horizontal, as long as they are the same length. So as you work through today's practice problems, again, if you are getting stuck, I encourage you to rewatch parts of the video as need be. Obviously, please feel free to come ask for help. That is the whole purpose of giving you some class time to work on these. And again, as long as you are staying on task, you also are encouraged to discuss these problems with peers. If you are getting stuck or confused, or if someone needs help, I encourage you to help them if you feel you have a good understanding of the content. So please, again, let me know if you have any questions on the notes or as you're working through the problems.